is a huge issue, I think, when it comes to HTML5 in particular. When you're creating a native application, which then raises the whole question of when would you use HTML5 to create a native application? <clears throat> um, like a hybrid? Or no, you mean straight like, out. Like, well, I so mean, when would you use it just in general? When would you say it? Um, I mean, I think there's a lot of use cases. I think there's some uh, interesting use cases. Uh, for example, I, I built a hybrid application for Belly, um, and the reason being is that we had thousands of iPads that we control that nobody else could access. It was locked down, so we had to we had to come up with a way to uh, to update it on the fly. And so what we did is we built a hybrid app that allowed us to push na uh, our JavaScript application to it. So on it's the like fly. bootstrapping your application. Yeah, exactly. We called it. We we had a uh, we had a um, a bootloader, we called it, where we could just basically push a whole package, a new a Trojan package. horse. Yeah, and it would it would load up on the on the local file system in the iPad. Um, it would ref, re, just refresh the web view with that new application. But you could do exactly the same thing with a native application. Can you though, and still get away with it? I don't know if you can on iPhone. <clears throat> We actually use Asana for our uh, project management, like our task so, manager. So do we, yeah. <clears throat> and their application on iPhone, it'll just say updating to latest version, and it just does it. And uh, that has to be the it's web, right? <clears throat> it's like a web view. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure that uh, Apple locks that down. They don't want you to do that without the user saying, Because you have to go through the whole okay. approval process and all that. Yeah. Well, not only that, hassle. they want to take their cut. Uh, <laughs> sales. Oh, come yeah. on, don't be like that. Well, that Sorry to be so pessimistic. Which brings up a good point about control, right? One of the reasons to develop with HTML5 in the web is that you have more control. You well, don't have to go through the channels yeah, of because you can bypass. You have you have more control in some ways, but then you're also giving up some control in other ways. It's it's a, it's a toss up. There's no clear like advantage to HTML5 over native when native has uh, or there's sorry I don't think that's a good way of saying it. <laughs> there's I lots of advantages. At me. That's the hateful eyes that they talk about. <laughs> um, they. Uh, I, I don't think it's clear cut in that like there's clear use cases for HTML5 and clear use cases for native right. so always. It's the right tool it's, for the right job. Yeah, it's the right <laughs> tool for the right job. And the HTML5, the advantage that HTML5 have is it's by far not the greatest language out there. Um, and we're Agreed. also saying one of the things about HTML5 is that we're calling it HTML5 when we're meeting JavaScript, CSS, the whole weird. Of and that annoys right. the hell out of me. It's up. Bleep that out. <laughs> um, but not, <laughs> not in Europe, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so, wait, I thought in Europe they would allow that. Oh, yeah. HTML to be. Yeah, but they, ha so they have to bleep it out. So we're in America, and they but I, think, I think it's interesting that one of the best parts about this platform, at least in my perspective, compared to, say, the native iOS or Android platforms, is the uh, ability to frequently and quickly evolve and explore and progress. The platform, the HTML5 platform, and under that umbrella, I do mean JavaScript and CSS, is constantly evolving with new technologies, new things. And I find this interesting duality between the technology advances and then the tools catch up. And sometimes the tools go faster and then the technology has to catch up. So it's interesting to me that that, 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 that same story isn't being told in iOS. You don't see people uh, talking about, I don't know that it's true or not, but you don't see people talking about the fact that we explored this whole new thing and added it to iOS and then Apple released that as a new standard in their operating system. What you see is a trailing signal. They, they get up to speed whenever a new release comes out. iOS is a fairly specific example here and, and probably a little bit of a pathological example as well. I mean, so how does it play in the Android world then? How, how is it different well, in the Android world? Yeah, probably not as much. The, the innovation is going to be driven by collaboration, open source, people experimenting. Um, I find the greatest the greatest examples of creativity come when you restrict the rules. I mean, I, I don't know if you remember, or if you can think back to when you first started programming. For me, it was basic, and for me, it was, it was very languages where you couldn't do anything particularly exciting, and through that really restricted set of rules, you create it. And languages come out now that have these massive, .NET, for instance, has, well, when it started, when it was released, it had 8,217 base classes. And now it's like even bigger than that. There's no, there's not as much scope for creativity. You're, you're constantly hunting to try and find what to do, what you can do, without reinventing the world. JavaScript some, has that restriction. You see some really interesting things in the web because of that. Where like, right. you know, we we tend to like create things. That, you know, it's like we we use the platform more than it's capable of, and then we build standards around it. Right.